Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss about a new data structure which is called Q. And we are going to talk about the Q abstract data structure. By abstract data structure means we will be just talking about the uh, features and the operate features of Q and the operations that can be done on these Q data structures. And we are not going to talk about the implementation details. Okay. So we'll be uh, just talking about the logical and the mathematical model of Q data structure. As you know, the, a data structure is an organized way of uh, storing data, right? So Q is also used, Q is also a data structure that is used to store and organize data. Um, to get a good idea about Q, we can just think about a real life Q. And a real life Q is going to give you basically the all the basic uh, features and operations that, that a Q has or it can be done on a Q. Let's think about a Q uh, in in an ATM booth, and uh, it's a busy busy uh, ATM booth. So uh, people people are actually queuing up. So if we look at the features of, let's try to identify the features of this queue. Okay. So first of all, this is a linear, right? A Q data structure is also a linear data structure. And then uh, there are actually two ends open. So it's a container. You can think this is a container where the two ends are open. So this end is open and also this end is open, right? Uh, so basically people can actually enter, uh, people can enter here, right? And someone new can join the queue here and someone who is already done can exit the queue here right so we can say uh, both container with both ends open right yes um so and uh, okay so there goes the features of the queue now let's think about what operations can be done. Oh, another thing that I missed, the third one is first in, first out, which is known as a FIFO, first in, first out. This is, what it means is the first person that enters the queue also leaves, is out of the queue first, right? So this person was the first person that joined the queue. So this one was the second, this one was the third. So the so this was the order they entered the queue, right? When when we are talk about we when you are talking about the exiting the queue, again the order is going to be one, two, three. That means the first person that entered the queue is also leaving the queue as the first person, right? So this is FIFO. This is this is very important. So these are the features of a queue. Now let's talk about the operations on a queue. Okay, so if we talk about the operations on a queue, uh, there are two major operations you can see. Uh, one is someone, if someone is entering the queue, suppose someone new is entering the queue, right? We call it NQ. and then someone exiting the queue, exit, right? Someone exiting the queue, we call this operation in DQ. So these are the two primary operations on the queue. Okay, so based on whatever we extracted from a real life queue, let's try to draw a logical model for the queue data structure. So this is, a container with both ends open. So let's try to enqueue, say, five. 
right? Okay, so five is going to be in Q, put in the Q. And as we know, uh, the NQ always happens in the tail, right? So we can say this is the tail. So NQ always happens in the tail. And DQ, which is this, DQ always happens at the, this is the front of the Q, right? Okay. So when we are doing the NQ of five, you can say both the front and the tail are actually pointing to the same thing, right? Okay, so next let's do another NQ. The NQ 10, right? So what's going to happen is 10 is going to be enqueued here, right? And as we know, uh, the NQ always happens in the tail, right? So the tail actually now moves to this, right? Okay, so if we do another NQ, say 50, right? So this time, 50 is going to be enqueued here, the tail, and obviously this is going to be the new tail, right? Let's do other things. So let's do a DQ. So when you are actually DQing, we don't have any parameter because there is only one place where the DQ can happen and that is the front. So the DQ must happen in the front. So this is the only way out as we know that first in, first out, whatever was entered into the queue first, also exits the queue first. So this one becomes, is dequeued and then now the front is here. Okay, so if we call another uh, dequeue operation that will happen again on the front, right? Okay, so let's see how, what is the uh, time complexity to do these things. So as we see in both NQ and DQ, directly we know where the nq happens it happens in the tail and, and the dq happens in the front and we don't need to iterate through all the elements of the queue we just when we are when we are enqueuing we just jump here and do the nq right and when you are doing dq we just jump here and do the dq okay so that means this is constant time operation both nq and dq now let's talk about some other operations. Uh, some other operations are uh, pick these returns, uh, returns the front of, of the queue. So this re just returns the front. So if we do a pick now, it will return 10. But what it's not going to do is it's not going to do dequeuing so 10 is not going to be taken out of the queue just you are we are return the value we know that the 10 is on the front of the queue but we, this operation pick operation is not going to uh, do any dequeuing so we can say this is order of one operation again okay so now let's think about queue uh, from a, a programming language perspective different programming languages implement queue in different ways uh, you can just look at your favorite languages implementation and learn how you can use the queue data structure there. Uh, I'm showing you the Java way. So in Java, C queue is actually an interface. So it's not a class. And the classes that are uh, implementing queue interface, one is linked list class, uh, array queue, priority queue, right? Now this priority queue, array queue, everything has some different purposes. Um, 
So we'll talk about those things uh, later, but let's talk about a general queue. So if you want to declare a general queue, say a queue of objects, right? Any object, it can be integer string. So let's write as object, queue object, uh, queue equals to new linked list. Uh, remember here that we cannot, uh, since Q itself is an is an in interface, we cannot just make an instance of the Q. Instead, we have to use uh, a class. That's why this is how we do it. Linked list is a class which implements Q. Okay. So next, what we can do is Q dot say add. Okay. So what are the the NQ operation that is pull. This is the NQ. Sorry, I made a mistake. The NQ operation is offer. Offer say five. Okay. And then, so this is the NQ operation in Java. Remember, uh, we can also do q dot add this is also fine but the thing is uh add uh, yeah, in certain cases it uh, throws uh, exception uh, so instead of add it's better to use uh, offer right and then the dq operation is pull so this is the dq operation in java Uh, then there is a pick operation that we just discussed. And then, uh, uh, so the pick operation here will return, say, five. Okay, it won't return anything. It will return null because already we have done a DQ here, right? Uh, so we already have a, done a DQ here. But instead of that, if we had, say, say we had done another NQ, okay? So this one, five, then adding 10, then by dequeuing, we would have dequeued five, right? But 10 was still there. So it's, in this case, pick would return 10 to us. Uh, then q dot size, this returns size. So for now, the size is one, right? And finally, q, q dot is empty. This returns true or false. In our case, in this for this example, it will return false, right? And we get this because the q actually extends collection class, right? And because of that, q dot is empty is also available. Okay, so next let's talk about uh, real life implementation of a queue. Uh, think about a printer that is uh, connected to different machines, like laptop, desktop computers through the network. Now everyone can use the printer. And, and so the printer is a shared resource, right? Okay, so suppose someone has sent a printing job and while this job is happening uh, so someone sends a printing job he's the first person while this job is happening another person also sends print request so it's not good if we just drop this request saying that okay the printer is busy right so that's not an ideal scenario uh, then and not a good design or implementation or user experience. Instead, what a printer should have, it should have a queue, right? Where it will say, this is machine A, this is machine B. So it should put the requests in a queue and then perform the executions in the order that they came into the queue. So if both of them actually send the request, the request from A will go into the queue, then the request from B 
then say request from C, right? So the printer should put all the requests, printer actually puts all the requests into the queue and then serves them the way using the FIFO principle, right? So this is served first, then this is served next. Okay. And finally, this is served. Okay. So this is an example of a real life real life implementation of a queue. So that's all about queue. Uh, in our next discussion, we are going to talk about another data structure.